So welcome. Welcome everybody to the Open Ed SIG OER 19 preview webinar. And I think I was saying earlier, I feel rather like the, uh, the Easter Bunny today because I'm bouncing around, apart from people bouncing around on the ceilings, because we had some interesting upside down interaction going on earlier. Um, uh, I'm, I'm bouncing around with chocolate Easter eggs and wonderfulness coming all the way from Ireland, thanks to Laura and Catherine today. Um, they're going to share with us the plans that they have in store for the OER 19 um, conference this year and just looking at the nature of some of the things that have been shared recently I know they have such amazing treats in store so it's fabulous to to have you with us today thank you very much for coming to talk to us about the events that are about to unfold in just a few weeks time uh, and it's really very exciting to have such an international cohort of presenters here with us because I'll, I'll let them introduce themselves, but they're joining us from all over the world. So how exciting is this? So in terms of what we're going to do, well, of course, let me just remind you that OER 19's theme is recentering open critical, and that is critical, critical and global perspectives. So I'm going to hand over to Catherine and her team, and we've got such an exciting team of, of panellists and keynotes uh, with us today. And she's going to be sharing her slides with us, so sharing her screen. But if you prefer to have the slides open uh, separately, then I just repeated the link there in the chat to these slides. And <laughs> Laura is upside down in Cape Town. <laughs> Catherine, I'll hand over to you. OK, um, I am hoping that I will be sharing my screen. Can you see my screen yet? It will be coming online very shortly. At the moment, we just have everybody's webcams. Okay. okay. Where is it? And you're coming through to share application yeah. screen and then pushing your screen through. Okay. Can you let me know when you can see it? I will indeed. I will okay. indeed. Okay, I'm not sure what the problem is. It had it worked earlier, didn't it? <laughs> Laura, <laughs> Laura's back upside down again. How do you keep your hair so perfect when you're upside down? That's just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> can okay, defy I'm, the I'm, rules of physics. <laughs> I'm turning it up again. I tried various things. It clearly didn't work. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. We're, we're delighted okay. to have you here, whatever perspective you're giving us. <laughs> and Upside Down is a great new perspective. <laughs> I'll have to get together with Lorna Campbell, I see. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Um, are we, there we are go. We're seeing, screen, yep, we're seeing your screen, thank you. Um, I've just had a message in the chat, um, Catherine, just to ask you whether you could make the link um, an open link for the slides for people who want to open the Google Docs separately. Yeah. Um, can I, can I, 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 I can Caroline or someone who's in the, the presentation to do that? Caroline or Taskeen? That would be great if you wouldn't mind just giving the access. Lovely, Caroline, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, well, I guess I'll kick off and then Laura, please turn in. Yep. Um, we, uh, we have a, a wonderful and yet evolving panel of speakers today. So Laura and I were asked to join this preview webinar, which usually happens before the OER conference. And we asked um, the three members of our wonderful keynote panel if they would join, because we've been having um, ongoing discussions with them about um, the panel that they're preparing, which is we're very excited about. So Judith and Caroline and Teskeen 
um, will be presenting today. And then very spontaneously, just yesterday, uh, Su Ming Ku, our, one of our other keynote speakers, said she was going to be in Dublin, so she's sitting right next to me right now, so she'll be here as well. So um, I might just say a couple of words about the conference and then maybe hand over to you, Laura, to, to talk yeah. to the teams. Okay. okay. So um, last April, um, it was announced that Laura and I would be the co-chairs for OER19. So we've had the amazing pleasure of working for the last, I guess, about 14, 15 months now with ALT and with um, a wonderful conference team um, just to pull the conference together. So it really is a great honor to do this and um, we're really looking forward to it. Um, in terms of the conference itself, I was thinking this morning, a conference looks very much like an event and it is definitely an event but it's a lot of other things as well. So it's an ongoing conversation. It's an opportunity to pull threads together, extant work, emerging work, the sparks and connections and synergies that happen around a particular theme. So um, in, in choosing the theme for this year's conference, Laura and I had many conversations and certainly critical perspectives and global perspectives have become you know, a very dominant um, part of the conversation and open recently, as well as political and historical perspectives. And we really wanted to not, you know, not so much create that, but just really follow that conversation where it's going. And, you know, as we said last year, we're moving away from hero narratives. We're moving away from the notion of one open. Um, we know that open can actively move towards equity, but that it can also exacerbate inequality and marginalization. So, we invite interpretations around this theme and in the blog posts that have been posted so far um you know already we're really excited to see that and there'll be yet more of that on april 10th and 11th in galway so we're really excited that such a wonderful community of people have gathered around the theme and maybe i'll hand over to laura now if, if you wish laura just to say anything else you want to about the theme and then i can go to the next slide which shows the um the different individual themes yeah maybe go to the next slide okay yeah, so just to pick up on what Catherine was saying, we felt very strongly that it was time to get back to basics, that open has become so many things to so many people and been appropriated for so many agendas. Um, and we see things like open washing happening a great deal more. And we thought it was really important to start asking the basic questions all over again. And fundamentally, it's really about whose interests are being served and whether the open agenda is, is being sold out, has been sold out, has been taken over, has been reclaimed, should it be reclaimed, etc. And we wanted to also look at, ensure that we would look at it from a, a global perspective and look at the geopolitics of open education because sometimes very well intentioned objectives um, undermine themselves in terms of unintended consequences so that would mean looking at open ecosystem and looking at the role of con of context very strongly and as well as looking at the role of history and linked to that the whole question of critical literacies and critical data literacies and how they link to open and then last but definitely not least how we can consider open business models and paths to sustainability where there's a real danger at the moment that market forces are appropriating some possibilities of open for different ends that, that we understand the open movement perhaps to have been founded on. So those are the themes and we've been incredibly excited that they've been taken up by such a, an incredibly large a group of people. I believe that this is the biggest OER conference that's happened to date. Martin can correct me if I'm wrong. And I know we've been having to look for extra rooms. So it's clearly speaking to the concerns that are happening at the moment. Okay, thanks, Laura. Um, I, I just want to mention that I cannot see the chat because I'm sharing my desktop. So if, if, if Teresa or Laura, you can mention if there's anything do you want me to pause at any point, please? Okay, sure, sure. Um, most, I expect most people who are here in the webinar have seen the uh, program, and as Laura mentioned, because the numbers are so high, it's over 200, approaching the maximum capacity of our venue now of, of 220. Um, 
the, there's a, been a slight delay in releasing the final program, again, because we're just looking for a little bit more space. But we do know exactly who our five keynote speakers are, and we just thought that it would be a really nice opportunity in this webinar to feature um, them. Now, um, we have five people from, from all over the world, really, and we're very, very excited. Their bios are on the link um, shown on the slide there. Um, Kate Bowles is, I think, should be sleeping right now because it's in the middle of the night in Australia. But I, I think most people who are here in the webinar would know Kate's work, and we we were just chuffed completely when, when Kate accepted our invitation um, to, to give a keynote. Kate's research and teaching, and particularly her writing around care and open and um, politics of higher education, reach far and wide. And I know she inspires very many of us. So we're we're really honored that she's going to be um, one of our keynote speakers. And Su Ming Ku, who is a lecturer in political science and sociology at NUI Galway, is also speaking. And instead of me saying anything about her, Sue is sitting right next to me. So um, I might ask Sue just to give a little bit of an introduction to her and what she hopes to speak about. Uh, okay, so I'm um, Sue Ming Ku, and I teach in the uh, School of Political Science and Sociology at NUI Galway. So I'm uh, quite a, a carbon-friendly alternative <laughs> speaker. Uh, and I was able to reassure everyone that uh, I didn't need extra travel or anything like that. Um, so I just go to work normal. Okay, I have a much more daunting <laughs> task of addressing you lot rather than my normal students. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll follow on in day two with the keynote on day two, and I'm right. going to talk about decolonial perspectives in teaching and curriculum. And I want to talk about open in a world that has already been opened and um, about what we need to repair. Mm. Thank you. Is that enough? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it sounds a bit mysterious. I'm trying to, to big it up because being on day two, you know, I need to big, big it up a bit. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I think w what we might do is um, certainly the moderators can let us know if there are any questions, but um, we might just flow right through our slides so that the, our panelists can present and then we hopefully have time for discussion amongst all of our speakers at the end. That would be great, so, Catherine. Okay. So our, our keynote panel, again, Laura and I uh, just, again, just immensely honored that the three Global South women who are all PhD scholars in the area of open education um, accepted our invitation um, to do something a little bit different, and that is to weave together their research and their perspectives and highlighting some of the tensions around open um, from their own unique perspectives. So Judith, Peta, Carolyn Kuhn, and Taskeen Adam, I will hand over to the three of you now, um, and please um, advise me to advance the slides as I can, and we're looking forward to hearing from you. Yeah, I just want um, to repeat, just, before you start, Judith, I just want to repeat how thrilled we have, we really are to have this kind of panel. Um, we, we believe it's really important to have perspectives, not only from the Global South, but from people at this, at this point in the scholarly process. And it's been enormously enriching having these conversations to date, so it's going to be wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Just conscious that Judy has just arrived. Um, Judy, are you okay to start? Do you want me to start, and then you you do your, you do us a second one, the introduction? Just aware that you just arrived. Yeah, Caroline, so I can advance to you, and then hopefully Judith yeah. can. Yeah, yeah, I think Judith will need to. Know that you're you to put your mic on, Judith. Come down to the bottom of the screen and uh, click on the sort of microphone-shaped object, the second one along. Um, okay. So, well, if you are thrilled to have a keynote panel, we are, and I am, uh, out of myself, just uh, so excited to. I mean, the keynote and and all the experience, but I just think to have the opportunity to talk together with Taskeen and Judith um, is, is, has been for me the highlight of the year because they're really what we have learned crafting this together has been more and, and far reaching than our PhD we were saying that yesterday so that I wanted just to acknowledge that. Um, 
So I, I am from Venezuela, um, but I have German parents. Um, so I have been raised in a Latin country with a German upbringing, which has been very contradictory, to be honest. And um, I am a mathematics teacher, formed mathematics teacher, um, very involved always with social justice, which in a country like Venezuela is terribly unjust and it's, uh, the inequality is hor hor horrendous. And so education suffers very much with that inequality because public and private education uh, are the yeah the completely two different worlds in in all what that in all what that entails. Um, uh, I'm now in the UK doing my PhD, and I'm really concerned, as I was in Venezuela, with students' voice. And and um, my PhD is about putting that voice outside of of, of their inner space and trying to look at what are the things that for them imply struggle, which structures are really coming in their way so that that open practice cannot be enacted. And, and I think that's for me now, and I'll, I'll give the chance to, I think, Judith, if she's there and, and available. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Carol. I am there. My name is Judith uh, uh, Pete. I'm from Kenya. And uh, I am very happy to be part of this team of the keynote speakers. And uh, uh, the main thing is uh, to share our, 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 I mean, our experiences on in the community of the open. Uh, as a career, I, I am an academician. I teach in the university. And I also worked previously in an NGO. And uh, uh, more importantly, my focus is on uh, a sustainable open community where everyone has a say, everyone contributes equally, and then uh, finally we see on how to holistically transform societies through open education. Uh, and now, um, in, in my research, I am studying at the Open University of the Netherlands, and uh, uh, my PhD research is on differentiations that uh, appear or that people experience with regards to open education resources. And I did this research in three different countries uh, through assessing differentiation in access to and use and sharing of OER among students and lecturers within 12 uh, universities in three countries in Africa. And uh, this was basically uh, a, part, a broader part of the raw 4 d project, research on open education resources for development project. And um, uh, in this uh, uh, discussion, I'm very much happy to see uh, and also to share my experience and giving my feelings and uh, views with regards to how differentials can also be powerful in terms of creating social justice. Carol, are you there? Thanks, Judith. Oh, yes, Taskin, yeah. Okay, okay, I guess it's me. Um, firstly, just, um, yeah, thank, thanks for having us here today again. Um, before I even introduce my, myself, I'm actually really, really excited that Zooming is here because um, I've always had this like imposter syndrome feeling coming first from an electrical engineering background and then from a development studies and I've never quite, I'm always on the periphery of education. So it's nice to see um, uh, also a bigger presence of uh, people from development, international development and politics. And I think that deals so much with the, the, the uh, theme of the conference. It's, it's now looking at openness from this geopolitical angle as well, and, and then it intersects so much um, with uh, development and um, historical imbalances and, and all of these issues that, that the conference is going to be talking about. Um, so yeah, I mean, just a background for me, I'm from South Africa, and I think what's really interesting is both Caroline, Judith and I, we were very emphatic about mentioning which countries we are from, because our context and our perspectives really come from our lived experiences in these countries. Um, so yeah, growing up in South Africa, you, you just see the world very differently um, with relate, in the relation to uh, what is at the center and what is on the side. Like for example, in my education, we'd be learning about the French Revolution, but we'd never learn about uh, the empires in Mali or um, you know just about the rest of the African continent. And so. Um, a lot of my research deals with this, is how these historical imbalances that have existed in our 
um, physical education is now being carried on over into uh, the open and the online education models. And so um, how, if we don't bring these injustices or these imbalances to the forefront, um, we can just think that we have this neutral global education. Um, so my PhD itself uh, looks at this topic from, from two angles. So it, it's the bigger philosophical view of um, digital neocolonialism and how um, the internet can be used as a tool for virtual colonization um, and instead of resources um, or physical resources like coal and gold being the, the um, sought after thing, it's now data and um, humans and so looking at those balance, uh, imbalances uh, and then at a much more practical level, I'm working at in five different townships in South Africa. So townships are basically like the much poorer areas that form around um, the main cities um, due to uh, the group areas that's in South Africa, um, where you would have these core centers, which were previously white areas, and around them um, you get townships forming, which are much more, uh, uh, much less resourced. And I look at um, basically the supply and demand. So the MOOCs that are being produced in South Africa and what are actually these students needs, these most marginalized students, um, what would they want from an education and how could online education um, seek to, to meet their needs? Yeah, that's it. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll get into things much more deeper in a bit. I suppose uh, Caroline can uh, tell us a bit more about um, how our research is going to be linking to the themes of the conference. Um, yes, thank you, um, Toskine and Judith. Um, again, just when I hear you, I, I get even more um, happy and excited about being together um, in the same conversation. <laughs> so yes, we, we, um, we, we did look at the themes um, and we did look at how our research addresses in one way or in another these kind of different themes that are proposed for the conference. So um, Taskeen addresses geopolitics of open, as you just said, with her interest. Um, open for whom is a, is, a, is, a, is a question that she answers very well. Um, the historical perspective as well, because I think that colonial and decolonialization has to do with history. It's nothing that you can't forget about the history and then talk about what's happening nowadays. So I think Taskeen enlightened us with what has been, um, what has happened from a long time ago and how that has consequences in what we can see today. Um, Judith uh, looks at the back to basis in the sense of asking questions like why open? and the need of um, a more accessible OER policy, if that makes sense. In Kenya, in the, in the sub-Saharan um, area, I think, if that is the name, sorry, I'm a bit ignorant in that. But yes. it's in, 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 yeah, sorry. And then um, she looks at, we were putting that, she looks at, she addresses the open ecosystem and how is open part of that bigger ecosystem. And I think that she's looking at an ecosystem already and how, how that can be improved in a way, what are the things that need to be changed so that, that um, the area that she's looking at, which is part of a bigger ecosystem, how can that be improved? And then um, at the very end, my research um, feeds into the links between critical digital literacy, open data, and openness. And it also links into the question of how does the context illuminate openness? Because my research is very, um, um, it addresses the influence of the context in the agency of students. So it doesn't look, it does not look at agency as something that is in, happens in isolation, but it is um, shaped by um, the cultural um, kind of the cultural aspects of the institution or the space where that is happening, and then um, also the whole structural aspects of of the spaces where people are interacting with. And and I think that 
that in a way, um, yeah, we, we are, and, 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 and also, sorry, um, Judith is addressing the business model in a way, not the business model as such, but I think that one of the things she is proposing is pathways to sustainability, and she will propose a model, I think, at the very end, um, or it's in, it's in her ideas if it's not there, but she's addressing that as well. So I think that we really have lots to give to these um, to all of these things and I think we will illuminate them of course together with all the rest the 200 people that are, are going to be there um, but in that keynote um, panel uh, hour we're going to illuminate I think a lot of those things so um, yeah I hand over to Judith I think here or um, not yeah uh, thank you very much Caroline for the wonderful outlet that you've uh, given us uh, well, uh, in answering our major questions that was guiding our lines of thinking, uh, I think uh, that uh, each and every one of us has a very good approach towards uh, uh, towards uh, basically understanding and giving uh, leeways in which we can answer some of these questions in a more sustainable way. Like, for instance, personally, I grew up in the village in a rural setup where a number of things I only got to learn when I moved to the city, when I basically came for my university study. Now, when I moved in and I realized, uh, I read about OER and I said, okay, this is a good thing. Then I'm like, okay, how comes uh, we, okay, I say, how comes I was not involved, let me make it personalize it, in, in coming up with these beautiful strategies and wonderful models in which each and every person can access quality learning materials that can enhance quality life as well. So I got that interest. Then I'll ask myself now, we talk about open educational resources. It is open, yes, but for whom? And really, is it really open? And how can this openness therefore be made uh, more, um, uh, how can we bring the aspect of social justice in between the aspect of openness? And um, as a result, um, when you talk of issues of differentiations, of which, uh, according to me, differentiation should be a power because we, we cannot ignore differences. We must embrace differences. Then can the differentiations, therefore, can you be used as a power that would help each and every individual to access, irrespective of where you are, irrespective of your previous backgrounds, and then following the paths of what history informs us, then I think there's something we must challenge because these paths also had some injustices to lead us to where we are today, where now I am asking, it is open for whom? And why, why was it made open? So uh, basically, we are looking at models that can help us in rescheduling our educational systems such that the inclusion issues of equity and, uh, and, 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 and equality becomes part and parcel of our actions. Taskin? Yes. Oh, OK. So yeah, I think Judith really emphasized the, the various themes of of what we'd like to talk about. And just to take a step back and talk about um, how we decided what we wanted to talk about. And um, one of the steps uh, that we took is to actually look at the submissions that have, have been entered into the conferences. I mean, we have the various um, themes. And what we noticed was um, two specific uh, themes had very little submissions. And that was the historical perspectives and the challenges and barriers. And so we also, um, what we're going to attempt to do in our keynote is challenge um, the, these aspects of the conference that that um, are still that still need much more thought and much more improvement. And um, if you could just go on to the next slide, I think um, how we how we decided to sort of structure our our thoughts is to divide um, our questioning and our our challenging into three steps. So it would be uh, the what, what is openness? Um, is, is openness inherently good? Um, are, we, are we actually cha challenging or tackling um, injustices when we promote open? Um, is, is openness and social justice the same thing? Um, and so we, we really are going back to the basis and it, at every point we questioning openness. Um, 
then if I move on to uh, the next the next angle, um, the how, sorry, one more slide, I think. Um, the, this, this for us is very important to challenge praxis because there's a lot of theory out there. We know we, we, we know how to say what we should do, but practically, how are we doing this? And I think this is one of the advantages of having Judith, Caroline, and I um, present on this is because we're all in the middle of our fieldwork and in our research. And so we have that on the ground perspective um, of taking the, the theory and actually trying to, trying to see how it works on the ground. And so for us, the praxis, uh, the actual practical um, nuances come in here and like uh, for me for example the balancing of uh, the global and the local um, mm -hmm. it's much easier when you're looking at it from a decolonial sector perspective in a physical area to know what the local is but once you're in an open online global space what does it mean to balance uh, the global and the local um, how do you deal with the thousands of, of locals from around the world the millions of, of local perspectives and that then again comes back to practice. So the pedagogy that you're going to be using to challenge all these different perspectives and, and the plurality of voices um, that are out there. And then um, in the last part, uh, the what next, I think it's on the next slide. Um, we talk about what is the future of open. Um, so if, if we do implement the, the the ideas that we're talking about. So, for example, Caroline talking about uh, bringing education back to the student and, and um, sharing the student's point of view and the student's perspective. So, Judith's idea of bringing, uh, uh, taking things back to something that is more inclusive and, and bringing more diversity into openness. If we do achieve all of these things, what then are the threats and what then are the challenges that we are going to face? And for me, one of the, the concerns for me is really um, what, are, what about openness being co-opted? I mean, we have problems of platform capitalism uh, where actually diversity can just be used as another tool for marketization. And, and yeah, an each step of the way, as we make improvements, we see that more challenges are going to arise. And so uh, the future of open can be very exciting, but it can also be daunting. And it's, and it's really good for us to start thinking two steps ahead um, in terms of that. Um, I think I'll hand over back to you. OK, maybe something something for, for the future of the open. Uh, basically, we are thinking through uh, models. Uh, I think when we talk of the future of open, then we are, uh, we, are, we, are we, we are sharing and thinking through what then can be done. Now, uh, we are thinking through models that can uh, embrace social transformation. We are thinking through understanding pathways to sustainability of what we do. And of course, re reinforcing working equitably with the marginalized communities that were and are still exploited. So we are just having broad pictures of, um, of, of thoughts that we can share and come up with a way forward that would benefit uh, each and everyone in the society. Karun? Um, yes. Um... I, I was thinking, <laughs> hearing um, at Taskeen and, and uh, Judith, what what is pertinent to say. Um, and I just think one thing I, I wanted to say is um, one thing I consider is very powerful in this in this um, in this panel that we are um, that we're doing is that the views of us. So I'm from Venezuela, and although I had German parents and I had a German upbringing, I really lived um, the the how do you say the, the the harshness of inequality of social inequality of poverty being 90 percent of the population very very poor <coughs> sorry and i think that our panel is strong because it has lived um that from different perspective but it has lived that inequality that exclusion that for example um Judith saying she's from a rural area and there it was very difficult to get electricity, let alone <coughs> tools to do things. Um, and, and so I think that our voice 
it is it is it is um enlightened with our research of course and with our work that we academic work that we have been doing but i think that the the soil of of our ideas and of our work is 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 really um fueled with our own experience and for me that makes it very very powerful because i think that it's not about talking something that you believe could be it's having lived that experience mm -hmm. Um, Gita, I think I think um, you can add a bit more about the collaborative and equitable work. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Deskin. Now, when it comes to um, collaboration, I'm trying to think through the Sub-Saharan African as a community, and uh, the and the the, the 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 myths and legends of thinking of what comes out there is the best. Now, uh, I'm thinking through the aspect of ownership of the processes that will make uh, openness more sustainable. Now, can we build up uh, strategies and models in collaboration? Can we promote teamwork? Can we build what is equitable in terms of each and every person has a say to? And so that if we need to uh, basically achieve the aspect of social justice, which is the essence of social transformation, then we need each and everyone on board. How do we do this? Then I'm talk, thinking in terms of the Sub-Saharan Africa or the Global South in general, and then the Global North. When we come up with models, we come up with solutions, then can each and every one of us form part and parcel of these models for social transformation? Um, thank you, Judith. I, I just wanted to add a little thing. Um, we had, um, and just wanting to say how, what Taskin also said um, a while ago, how local the concept of open can be, and um, how I think Latin Amer the Latin American region, um, we had an International Women's Day uh, webinar, and we hosted, I think it was six women working in, in the open, and how um, and it was basically three views from Latin America mm -hmm. and how Latin America has um, pioneered, if you want, the open access um, dimension of open because of the need and the lack of resources. <coughs> so, yeah, it's just curious. I just wanted to add this. And I think that um, the, the view of, of, of us three in that panel uh, will, will really... Um, yeah, it will really shed light to many, many different um, areas, and I think that what 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 we want to achieve is is to shed light to to many to as many areas as we can. To be honest with you, yeah. Um, I think at this point, if anyone has any questions for us, you can start um, bringing them through. But I just something I just wanted to also add on, and and I think. This was a discussion with some of you here as well on Twitter is about how openness is not necessarily something that's always online. And particularly in my research, and I'm sure it comes across in Judith when you're working on the ground, there's, there's a lot of ways to be open in an offline way and also a lot of ways to, to have more humility in openness because um, we tend to focus on openness that comes from uh, uh, the university's budget for branding the university, and that can all, always, uh, the agenda of openness can be co-opted in that way of a university branding, whereas there's always more subtle and humble ways of, of doing openness, such as, I think Caroline mentioned this like in one of our discussions, like um, opening your your journal um, access mm -hmm. to, to universities that are uh, that don't have access to this. And there's a lot of small ways that that we can embrace openness uh, that don't have to be flashy or big. Um, but yeah, I think let, let's get to questions. That's when things get really exciting. Wow, guys, I am absolutely in awe. <laughs> I think we've that has been such a rich insight. Um, it's more than a preview. It gives us a taste for where the conversation is going next. 
and it, it's so exciting to have this feeling of next steps and to have you guys encouraging people to envis envisage what happens next um that it was just amazing i'm i'm i've been busy writing things down retweeting things and <laughs> grabbing grabbing screenshots as we go through but i know i'm coming back to this recording to listen in more detail mm -hmm. and, and given that you've broken all records and that you're going to have um huge numbers out there in in galway it's great to know that we've also got our doors open from OER 19 for those people who can't physically be with you, um, who will still be able to participate through um, uh, the Open Ed uh, SIG, uh, sorry, the um, virtually connecting session and through the tweets and through YouTube and through Alt's um, network of ways in which they share the keynotes and the uh, conversations it is indeed, as Deb says, going to be so good. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Deb. That's amazing. Um, Catherine, there haven't been much in the way of questions. That, um, Helen mentions the historical perspective and the, the, the struggle of getting your head around a historical perspective. Um, and she mentions something that I'm sure means lots to those of you who research in open, and that's rivalrous and non-rivalrous resources. So I'll throw that out there and see if anybody would like to pick that up for Helen. Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, I could say something in response. Um, in terms of thinking about the where uh, decolonizing open and where you know what what got opened in the first place why were places opened why were people's livelihoods opened how were resources opened um, and uh, thinking about the commodification And, and this concern that uh, all of you, Carol, Judy, uh, Taskeen, you all have brought to the table with your reflections. And um, uh, the question of rivalrous and non-rivalrous goods relates to things in the world which have either been given a money value or haven't been given a money value. And uh, what I want to address uh, for some of the time in my keynote uh, in terms of repair and um, uh, humble repairs. Uh, are humble repairs to non-rivalrous goods, uh, generous goods, uh, gift goods, and asymmetrical goods, uh, which opened the door to a completely different way of thinking about the economics and the political economy of higher education and educational resources. So um, I do want to think about how we are entangled in a history uh, which has um, made it very difficult to take a, a non or anti commodity approach mm -hmm. and how technology has a role in both binding and unbinding uh, uh, us to forms of hierarchy and inequality. So I'm really interested in this idea of open as, as unbounded, but also recognizing how we've been tied and bound um, and entangled in ways of, of, of using things and being used by things. So I just want to be able to bring it back to a situation where we can think about a future where uh, humans can use things for humans and humans do not become things that are used by other things, if that makes sense. I know that sounds very abstract. <laughs> No, it absolutely but, um, does make sense. Don't get at what you were asking. It makes beautiful sense. It, it totally bit. does. And um, yeah, Helen is excited to hear your presentation. So yeah, absolutely. So thank you for addressing that. I did notice, Taskeen, um, you raised your hand. So perhaps you want to uh, chip in. Yes. Um, yeah, I just want to add on. I think she just said so many things that, that um, touch my on my research so much and especially looking at things from a decolonial perspective you have uh, varying different um, narratives on what decolonization is and um, I think in some ways there's, there's this idea that that the local needs to replace the global so in the African context we need to Africanize um, all content or look at look at like completely centralize it from a local perspective 
And then there are other narratives of uh, decolonization that speak about entanglement. And that's why I just love that that she mentioned uh, entanglement, because if we look at the, the history of knowledge, knowledge really travels through different countries, well, different continents and regions and cultures. And it, it really is such a collaborative way of looking at it. But yet through power imbalances, knowledges are claimed to be from one place or another. And I think um, online education and openness um, gives us gives us the edge and gives us the possibility to actually tackle the these entanglements of knowledge and actually uh, bring about the injustices that have have come. And I think really the the key here comes back to praxis, comes back to bringing in um, critical thinking and um, dialogue and knowledge sharing in order to to really get to the bottom of these entanglements. And, and and for me, that's how social justice fits into all of this, because through that dialogical process, that global dialogical process, we can actually come to more uh, epistemic pluralities, if I could say. Well, that's great. That's great. Uh, Jessica, yeah, we've got I, I just wanted Sorry. No, go ahead. It, uh, it would be really nice if everybody could put their webcams on just for a moment, all our presenters, so that we could see you. That would be great, um, if that's possible, yeah. even if you're upside down. <laughs> Probably especially if you're upside down. <coughs> yeah, especially if you're upside down, exactly. <laughs> that's great. I'm going to grab a screenshot there while I've got you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Where is Judith in Taskeen? I'm here, yeah, my camera's on. Uh, Where are a, you? There's a limit to the oh, number of screens. You'll see if it's your brand. <laughs> but we're seeing many of you, which is great. Can you see me? <laughs> Not now. I can't see you. I can see you. Oh, there you are. There you are. Um. Can you guys see me? I don't. My camera's on. If you if you're on. using Zoom, you've got a, you can see more of the same cameras at the same time, more cameras at the same time. But you've got a group mode switch at the top of right hand um, of your screen if you do want to move through and see different perspectives, which is important. <laughs> Excellent. That. Well, guys, it has been the most amazing and um, rich OER preview webinar. I think that certainly I've ever facilitated and uh, with so much in, I need to come back and stop and listen and, and take it all apart. Um, and I'm so excited. And I know everybody else taking part has feels the same to actually deal with opens and uh, to address some of the um, really difficult questions, the, the political questions, the social justice and equity issues, the connections between practice and theory, um, the tensions between global and local in an online context, therefore the critical digital literacies that we're struggling with and having conversations with um, more more in a more ongoing way and a broader way actually in more generic conversations in, in learning technology. So it's exciting to have OER 19 contributing to those discussions um, and leading the way very much on those discussions as well. Um, but as you mentioned, it's not all about the digital, it is about real life, very much about real life and the physical as well. And I know you're going to have such a great crack in, in Southern Ireland, in Galway, and I know that the opportunity for you to be physically together and have those conversations will enrich um, the nature of those conversations and the things that come out of them and I'm so looking forward to, to seeing that happen. Um, somebody mentioned the soil of experience which I thought I think I think it was Caroline which I think is such a, a, a rich analogy as well isn't it because if you've got great soil my, my husband is, is a very green fingered person I'm surrounded by lots and lots of plants as I sit here in my front room mm -hmm. um, little little plants that have got a long way to grow yet and and it just reminds me of how important it is to get the soil right mm -hmm. Yeah, and the soil, you can see that the soil of your panel is right and that great things are going to grow from this. 
So thank yeah, you so absolutely, much. Absolutely, Teresa. Thank you. Yes, and, sure. and I just wanted to, to yeah. add a little thing because it, it amazes me. And of course, nothing is just by chance, but I, I believe that we plan things, we work hard, but the universe does a little bit, um, it adds a little bit. Um, and I think that having this, you know, Kate and um, with her politics of, of looking, so with her political view um, to look at things and, um, <clears throat> And, and, and I think that the politics, our other um, keynote speaker, also um, in political science, and it's just, I think, really feeding in so beautifully because it, 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 you, we have the experience in, in us, but then we have the theory coming from our scholars that are more so, more maybe talking from the theoretical perspective. So I think in our, our group of keynote um, speakers, we are having praxis happening as we were, we are as we will be speaking. So I mean, it couldn't be more magic, to be honest. Just yeah, just that. Thank you very much. I couldn't agree more. And I want to say a great big thank you and lots of applause um, to all of those of you who've put so much time into preparing this preview webinar and and giving us such a close vision uh, of what will happen at, at OER 19 and such an insight. I know many, many people will be following um, your discussions and contributing to your discussions because the doors are very much open for contribution. So thank you very much for that. Um, do share your appreciation, guys, through the chat. There are There is a little clap avatar you can use or you can just uh, use the chat to feedback. Um, just a quick reminder that uh, today's session came to you thanks to the Open Ed SIG, which is supported by ALT. So thank you, ALT, for letting us have the platform and make this recording. Do keep in touch if you, uh, if you check the hashtag Open Ed SIG. I shall be uh, curating some of those tweets that have happened during the session today. Thank you all for coming and thank you so much for such a rich uh, conversation today about OER 19, which is definitely going to be breaking um, new records. Thank you so much, Catherine, Laura, Taskeen, Judith, Caroline. Uh, have I forgotten anybody? Thank you all so much for your contributions. Great to see you there, Brian, too. We appreciate the images that you've contributed to, um, to OER 19, all the work that's gone in. And I'm going to switch the recording off now.